Welcome back to the channel guys and today's review is on the new TaylorMade QI iron versus the Titleist T350. Remember guys, if you like our channel, please hit that subscribe button and tell all your golfing friends. So these two irons, I'm gonna get it out there straight away, are not irons that I would typically play and we are continually getting dug out for that comment, but it's really important that you understand it because I've got to put these to the test. I've got to give you, the viewer, an insight into what these irons do. The reason I probably wouldn't play these type of irons is A, because they're not my sort of look. I don't, I don't like the look of this type of iron. And also, they're not gonna suit my ball flight and what I'm looking to achieve. However, they are two fantastic irons. They've been performing brilliantly this year. Loft-wise, they're very, very strong. Okay, QI is a little bit stronger than T350 by about a degree. So they are strong irons, they are power irons, they are forgiving irons. And between the two of them, the real only subtle distance difference that I can see is that one has a forged face. So the T350 is gonna give that slightly softer feel. Both are very, very hot. Um, both look clean. We know um, TaylorMade are fantastic in this market, so they are brilliant in that uh, forgiving iron market. The T350 piggybacks the T300 range, it's a change for Titleist over the last few years. Um, the T350 has been a little bit of an eye opener though. I think people are, Titleist has that kind of horrible um, best players iron and you have to be a great player to use it but I think the T350 head has really entered and opened up a lot, a lot of people's minds and what's been brilliant it's also been really good for senior and lady golfers also because you can put some light shafts in it so look that's enough of me rambling you know that the data on this might be a little bit odd but look let's get it onto the mat and let's get some track num track man numbers and see what happens so we're getting straight into the T350 iron. One of the things that I've noticed over the last few fittings that I've done when I've been to Ping and when I've been to TaylorMade is that I need a flatter lie, this left hook. So for this test today, I'm gonna pop both of the irons in to a flat lie position. One, one flat, I think, on both. Gonna put the Nippon motor shaft in there, 120S, which is a shaft that I've been fitted for on a couple of times now. So T350 overall looks like a tight list. It's just been blown up a little bit. So I think what's great with this iron is they've taken the tight list ethos, the tight list kind of blueprint, if you like, and they've just blown it up and made it a little bit bigger, a little bit more forgiving um, in terms of the look. Top edge is a little bit thicker, a little bit more rounded than you used to see, obviously in a T350 or one of the, the player's irons. But overall, it gives a sense that it's come out of the Titleist family. So setting up behind the ball looks really sharp. Like I said, this iron is strong. Around uh, seven irons around the, the 28 degree mark. So it is a strong seven iron. As you guys keep saying in the comments, I get it is a seven iron. And I get that you could just stamp a five on, on a number five on the bottom like in the old days. But look, the reality of the modern iron is they make the loft stronger. One of the reasons they've done that is because of the ability to play with the weight. So just by changing the loft, and, and some of the other brands are very good at this, just by changing the loft and making the loft stronger doesn't always guarantee that the ball goes further, right? So if you were to move the mass of the head further up and higher in, in the head and you strengthen the log, you'd get no flight. It would just dip out of the sky. So what's beautiful with something like this is they're able to move the weight lower down, further away from the face, make it more forgiving and give it a higher launch. By strengthening the loft, it actually keeps the spin rate down and keeps the ball flight down so you can actually gain a little bit of yardage. So let's have a little hit here and see what happens. There you go, get that weight kicking in early doors, right out the toe, but super forgiving. Miss strike there, you will see it, but the ball speed still maintained. 116 ball speed, so pretty solid. Beautiful flight to that iron. And the daft thing is, I said earlier, and I say it in jest because we get these comments about whether you guys think I should be testing these irons or not, 
But actually, in reality, the longer iron of this, the T350, you could play, right? You could blend this in with a T200 or even a T150 if you've got the lofts just tweaked a little bit. You could blend this with the 4-5 iron just to make it more easier to hit and more fun to hit, really. So it's a real plus to this type of family that you can and play around with what makeup that you want. I think it's really important to also understand is that it doesn't really matter what it says on the bottom of the club, right? It mean, all you're looking for as a golfer is a, a, a golf club that can perform the way you want it to perform, height, control, flight, but also hits the yardage that you want to hit. The fact that it says seven and it used to be an old five is kind of irrelevant, right? So if you hit it, what you shouldn't be buying golf clubs on and when you're looking at any of these, especially these power irons, as I would call them, you shouldn't be looking for irons that I'm going to spend a thousand pound on a new set of irons because the seven, this seven iron goes further than my last. Okay, that's well, you can if you really want to. But my, my advice would be, actually, does it produce a different ball flight? Am I getting something out of this iron in terms of ball flight, trajectory, control, dispersion that I don't out of my current? Not just because Ego says when I stand on the par three next time, I can tell my mates that I'm hitting seven versus hitting a six. It's really forgiving this iron. I've actually not struck one yet. Ball speed's maintained, which is really good. Yeah, right, launch angle's good. Land angle's even better for me. Oh, there she is. When you do strike one of these irons, it is incredibly hot. It feels so powerful, but what it also feels with that forged face, it gives an incredible element of softness to it, which is synonymous with a tightless iron. You see there, I did rip that one a little bit. Got 125 miles an hour ball speed out, which is pretty, pretty hot. So T350 is certainly a really, really good iron. Now, let's add that to the QI iron. So. I'm going to pop this iron on here. Again, you, you'll see this, you may not have seen this before. One of the little tools that TaylorMade uses, they use a sleeve. Some of them have cog systems, Titleist is the cog system. But here with the QI iron, I'm gonna go flat again, just one degree in the lie. Put the Nippon shaft in it as well. I have got a cheeky little, in, in our Cambridge store here, we have some of the, the clubs, we've put, changed some of the grips over, we've swing weighted them to do that, uh, or changed some shafts to do that. So it shouldn't change the swing weight too much on this occasion. Um, this is just a standard grip anyway, but we just give, it just gives players a different chance to feel something slightly different when they're actually hitting shots. So QI iron, very similar, thick, nice thick top edge. Um, looks a bit boxy, I would probably say, more so than the, the Titleist. It looks, uh, Taylor made a very good at doing this with their irons and make them very, they almost feel very square in their approach. A um, bit more of a duller finish in terms of the finish of the iron. T350, chrome, very shiny. Um, let's have a little hit, see what this little bad boy does. It goes left is what it does. Okay. Good ball speed though for a big low hooker. Remember if it goes left, there's probably a good chance I've shut the face and the ball speed's gone a little bit quicker. That was ripped. Absolutely nuked that. 127 ball speed, wow. So you can see these irons are really hot. Loving that number there. Spin rates up a little bit. A little bit stronger in loft on the QI versus the T350. A little bit stronger. Um, again, the ability to shift weight. Let's not get confused that just by, you know, if I give you on this iron, if I take this down to 20 degrees and to call this a seven iron, if I don't get the weight correct in the back, you're not gonna get any launch which means your seven iron is going to come out very flat, which means you're going to go low distance. And remember what the, the aim of this type of iron, the iron, this golfer or this iron is aimed at is a golfer that 
is seeking a little bit more forgiveness, a little bit more enjoyment in the game, a little bit easier to hit, a little bit distance would be nice, possibly the ability to stop the ball a little bit easier on the green. This isn't designed at your tour elite amateur type player that can control the ball flight no matter what you give them. You know, let's put into context sometimes what these irons are about. So it's about, come on, let's stand up there and let's give it a good old ride and see how far this thing can go. Oh, wow. I mean, both of these irons. Definitely, you can maybe pick that up on the camera. Definitely a different sound. A lot firmer, a lot harsher in its sound, the QI iron. But ball flight is insane. So good. Ball speed is ridiculously quick. Obviously, that little bit of stronger loft will help that. Um, spin rate's crazy. Land angle's crazy. I mean, it's a brilliant iron. Oh, there's the thin. Look, come on, that's a really poor four out of 10 strike. Where's that gone? Still maintains ball speed though, right? So again, if you're, you're not happy and comfortable striking the face all of the time, we still maintain some yardage and the drop off a of distance wasn't that great. Oh, that's ripped. Wow just hangs there the beauty with that iron is so this is the bit that really excites me is when you've got an iron that's that strong in loft but if you could have seen that ball flight it is ridiculously high and just coming down I mean it's coming down with 54 degree land angle so regardless of the loft I've got in the club this thing's coming down it's going high it's flighted and that's down to the weight and the position of the weight in the head so a brilliant iron from TaylorMade a brilliant iron from Titleist but it's time to give it the AF Golf Store score so AF Golf Store score time. So we're gonna start with look. Let's start with look. So overall, which one do I prefer? I think on, in, it's very tight because they're very similar, but I think I would have to give it to the Titleist just because it, it blends so well from that family. In terms of feel, well, I tell you what, I wasn't, I'm not overly always overly enamored by products like this in terms of the feel, because they do feel quite harsh, but QI was really, really good. But just because it's got that forged face in it, the T350 just edges it for me. I think that's probably because it's something that I'm more used to. So we're two nil up in the Titleist T350. In terms of custom options, well, these two fantastic brands allow us to build in a build center, so I'm gonna give that an absolute tie because we can put whatever shafts you in. We've added some graphite options with Acra and C6 and all sorts this year as well. So for, for, for the type of iron that this suit, maybe some slower swing speeds as well, them extra graphite options from us actually might help you. In terms of, so we're looking at 3-1 at the moment. So in terms of price, well, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because this bad boy is expensive. It's, it's as expensive as the T200s and T150s. It's a very expensive iron. And that's why this one is gonna come out on top. If you were kind of getting similar performance and, and you were umming and ahhing, you could save yourself a fair amount of money by picking up the QI. So it's three, two. So it comes down to overall performance. Now, this was good, this was forgiving. It had really good ball speed, but this was better. Although I didn't like the feel as much, the performance, the land angle was better for me. The power off of this was brilliant. The ball speed was incredible. A little bit quicker in, in, for, for me. So overall, I'm gonna to have to give the overall performance to the QI. So that means the battle of the QI versus the T350 ends in a draw. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope that was a little bit more insightful for you. Remember, if you like our videos, please hit that subscribe button and tell all your golfing friends.